I'm terribly sorry. Could I? Isn't it silly? I'm, I'm so exhausted I can't even talk straight. You see, I need... Of course I see. You need help. Good evening. Good evening. Won't you come in? No tools. My car broke down. A flat tire. I've walked miles. Ages. Come on in. Getting dark. I hadn't noticed it until you came. Believe me, I'd noticed the dark. Outside, I mean. If I could use your telephone. I'll take over. How lovely. You, you can't imagine how good this looks. Now, telephone. It's not necessary. Please don't think badly of me, but I, I am drained. Can I add to it? Not this one. I'm not usually so desperate. Well, you see, I, I have been traveling for hours. To say nothing of the endless trek looking for... For me. Oh, Chris, where's David? What does it matter? I heard you. Our guest has a problem. She's had a breakdown. My car, that is. I'm still in one piece. About how far away, would you say? It felt like a hundred miles. Perhaps a mile or so. On this lovely road that eventually leads here. It's one of those little sports cars. Good. Chris knows what to look for. Go along with Eddie, our mechanic. He's brilliant. If he can fix it on the spot, drive the car yourself. Otherwise, have him bring it here. Yes, sir. It's really more than I had a right to expect. And we're both pleasantly surprised. You look tired out. Won't you sit down? You're a tourist. That's a dreary word. And hardly the word for you. A fever was on me. For once in my life, I responded to it. Go, it said. Be free, it said. Free as the wind. Be adventurous. And? And that's what you get for being adventurous. A flat tire. Start with your trip that brought you to me. An impulse. Puff. <laughs> now, I want to know about you. For example, that aquarium. Tropical fish. I suppose they must symbolize something to you. They're very pretty. They're very sad. Helpless little creatures in a glass prison. Nowhere to hide. They were a gift to the woman who decorated this room. I get rid of them, but I can't bear to hurt her. Ah, you see, you've told me something. You've told me that you're not quite the master of your fate, that you... That you seem to be. Dear foundling on my doorstep, we are none of us masters of our fate. We're doing a decent enough job if we can learn to accept it. How about that fellow there? With a lovely swallowtail with a horrible notches chewed out of it. Do you think he's accepted being nipped at? Accept is a word for people, not for fish. Fish are, people feel. We have some freedom of choice. If you had absolute freedom of choice, no restrictions, no limits... I'd choose you. Like that? 
Well? Well, we had to tow it in. Eddie said something about steering linkage. It'll take some work, but we'll fix it. Please forgive me. I, I must have been in a fog. I should have been the one to go with Eddie. We enjoy being good Samaritans. Thank you. I seem to be in good hands. And now You'll I... You'll spend the night, of course. Thank you. There, it's all settled. I'll go on ahead and make sure you won't be needing anything. Really, now, you mustn't feel you're putting us out. We have a large house with plenty of room for guests, and we're never without a few. You like them. I'm sure they like you. You just have time to freshen up before meeting them at dinner. Oh, no, I couldn't. I'm much too tired for food, to say nothing of the amenities. Well, then rest, as long as you like. supposed to be easy. Now sleep. You'll find some night clothes in the dresser. I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable. But if there's anything you'd like to... Oh, no, really. It's lovely. You're sure you won't be needing anything? Last chance. <laughs> Just this. Oh, it never felt so good. Sleep well. I'm in tune with this place. Somehow, it seems right to be here. I know what you mean. Many people who come to visit us feel exactly as you do. I want to apologize again for last night. And to your husband, too. He isn't my husband. Tell me, is he home? I'd like to say thank you before I go. He's in his study. And I expect he'd like you to stay. Up on the next level, the door facing the landing. the heart to hurt your decorator about this either. No, actually, it was my idea. For one thing, of course, it eliminates drafts. And for another thing, if you see an unwelcome visitor, you can always hide. You're wrong. The visitor sees me as I see him on equal terms. 
The ordinary door is either open or closed. This one is neutral. It neither invites nor does it repel. Close it, please. like ambiguity. It's clever. It throws people off. Perhaps. Coffee? Why, yes, I haven't had breakfast. I know. And I don't even know your name. Caligari. That's better. And your name suits you. It's exotic. I'm not sure whether I like that thing or not. An acquired taste. I find it beautiful. Really, I, I only came to say thank you and goodbye. Do you belong to anyone? I don't think so, not really. Have you been married? That's not always the same thing as belonging. Do you have children? No. If you had a son, what would he look like? I can almost picture him. Huge eyes, soft blonde hair, cuddly. What do these suggest to you? Tell me. Speak. seen her yet? None of us have. She doesn't seem disposed to mingle with us mortals. Chris must have seen her. Come on, Chris, tell us. Is she very pretty? Not Chris, dear. Christine. Even if she doesn't mind your familiarity, I do. Well, Christine? You can relax, Ruth. I don't think she'd be Martin's type at all. They are all his type. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeannie. I hope you didn't go and let them put cream in this cocoa. Cholesterol, you know. No, ma'am. Strictly Skimsville. Skimsville? Isn't that charming? <laughs> I've got to watch my figure, even though nobody else does. Oh, you have a noble figure, my dear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. Please, don't get up. I'll be right back.
How do you feel? You fainted, you know. You know I didn't faint. I know it, he knows it. I was drugged. I don't know what this filthy conspiracy is about, but I warn you, I intend to find... Don't worry, I, I'm not going to make a scene, not yet. But I do intend to find some things out for myself, and I don't think you dare stop me, not now. I'd very much like to meet your guests. By all means, you must meet them. I'm delighted at this opportunity to entertain our newest guest. I've already had dinner, but we could talk while you eat. That is, if you don't mind. I'd very much like to talk. I'd like you to meet our friends. Why not dispense with formality and start on a first name basis, hmm? This is Ruth. Charmed. And that's her Martin. How do you do? This is Vivian. Hello. I wouldn't advise you to play cards with her unless it's for buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bob. How do you do? And of course you know Chris. And everybody? I'm Jane. And that is a lobster bisque. It's unbelievably good. And probably drugged. Drugged with all the dreams of the sea. Salty, spicy dreams. That lobster sounds like Martin. Come to think of it, it looks like Martin. <laughs> <laughs> What'll it be tonight, Bridge? Oh, I don't mind, if we play for buttons. <laughs> I'll look for you later. We must have a good long talk. You mean you'll talk and she'll listen. Come along, my dear. Chris, let me impose upon you. Only your coffee could follow your bisque. I'm sure Jeannie won't be offended. She knows her limitations. Well, I'm very flattered. I'll see to it right away. Excuse me. Jane. That's me, plain Jane. Hardly that. At any rate, that's my name, and I'm stuck with it. Speaking of names, uh, first names only, of course, you still have me at a disadvantage. Sorry, I'm Paul. You're a friend of Caligari's? We're very close. I see. Well, what do you see? What I see isn't very pretty. I don't understand it and I don't like it. Well, give yourself a chance. To like him, Caligari? Oh, I suppose you find him... Strange. Maybe that's because you don't know him very well. Just between us, I find him rather strange, too. And maybe that's because I do know him very well. A cigarette? Yes, I would. I'm not always this ill-mannered. You said you know Caligari well. Tell me about him. Of course. What do you want to know? I want to know what kind of power, what evil hold he has on all of you. He has, hasn't he? <laughs> what gave you that idea? For example, the others didn't question for a minute my being his guest. And even you accepted it as a fact just because he says so. That's right. It is not right. I am not a guest. Don't you know what he's done to me? Shall I tell you? I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a telephone call for you. But that's impossible. Nobody knows I'm here. You are Jane Lindstrom, aren't you? Yes. Then follow me. This isn't a trick. You'll let me talk? Why shouldn't I? Hello? 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 Operator? Operator? Thank you. 
Here you are. I've been looking for you. Go away. No. After all, I've just found you. Please, please, whoever you are, go away. Can't you see that I'm hardly in the mood for that kind of thing? I'll go if you really want me to, but please don't wake me. Now, I won't bite. And it might do you good to talk to someone who cares about you. <laughs> All right. If I told you that I was held here against my will, that I desperately wanted to get out of here, and I needed help as I've never needed it before, would you help me? I'm not sure. They have electric gates, security guards. It wouldn't be easy unless... Unless he allowed it. And I'm right back where I started from. Believe me, please believe. I want to help. You too seem to be in trouble. Deadly trouble. Are you? Yes. Well, then we're both in the same boat, aren't we? Yes. Forgive me. I shouldn't have picked on you. Forget it. How can I? Do you know your name? Of course, silly. It's Jane. Do you know yours? Of course, silly. It's Mark. Look. How beautiful. It isn't really darkness and danger. This was made for children's eyes and people who love each other. Mark. Mark. I believe it's time to say good night. Wait. I have something for you. Where are you going? Please wait. It's a surprise. I'll be right back. Wait for me. Promise. an old-fashioned music box. Does it work? I used to love these. How did you know? I know everything about you. I had one like this. Exactly like this. Only mine had forget-me-nots and these are daisies. When I was a little girl. Tell me, what kind of a little girl were you? I thought you knew everything about me. <laughs> everything, but not as a little girl. Please tell me. <laughs> Listen. I remember. What do you remember? Well, for one thing, when you're a little girl, it's always summer. I was a little girl with large eyes and skinny wrists, and I liked to be alone in my secret place in the garden. I was an ungainly little girl with pigtails. Oh, wait a minute, I'm wrong. That particular summer, they cut my hair into bangs, and I hated it. It's really hard to remember. It seems so very long ago. So, so very, very long ago. Don't look so sad. I'm all right. Sure. Sure. Now you're looking sad. Not if you're not. Just because I started thinking about a, a silly little girl, sunshine and tears, daydreams and growing pains. No. Thank you for the music box. I'll keep it and treasure it. I, I want to sleep. Go.
complicated lock, Colonel. How long have you been here? Hasn't anybody told you about electric time locks? Like a vault in a bank. Nobody gets out of here. Not till morning. But that's for the birds. I mean, look, my boyfriend is picking me up. He's been waiting in his car. That's my fault. I guess I should have briefed you sooner. Hereafter, you tell your young man to pick you up at the back exit. Take that path there, past the trellis. You'll find it. You mean I can get out that way? No electric locks? No electric locks. Eddie's there. He'll let you out. Thank you. It's all over now. Oh, yes, oh, God. The nightmare. <laughs> well, you're soaking wet. I want you to go to bed and give yourself a good towel. Please, I... I don't want to go back there. I think I... I feel a bit hysterical. I say you need some sleep. And besides, I don't want you to catch cold. I am tired. I feel a thousand years old. Tomorrow I'll be young and beautiful for you again. When shall I see you? I'm sorry I can't come before dinner. Why so late? Something terrible can happen before that, something awful. I just can't come to you sooner. Good morning. Are you being funny? No. It's a beautiful day outside. If the sunshine ever struck you, I believe you'd writhe. You don't really mean that. I do. Yours is a dark world, mine is not, and I want to go back to it now. Please sit. Well? 
There are some problems involved. You know about your car? Damn you, my car is perfectly all right. Look, I simply won't put up with this not a minute longer. Not after what happened yesterday. Tell me, what did happen? You pretend you don't know? After insulting me, violating me, those sordid little cards ogling me in my bath last night. What if I did? You blundered. Incredibly. At first you were attracted to me and now you are no longer. Is this what you're saying? I feel such contempt for you. Why? Spying, peeping, it's cowardly, vicious. I was completely vulnerable in my bath. My bath. My house, my sphere. And you are my guest. Guest! We both know I'm a prisoner. Behind locked gates, surrounded by watchdogs. If the police ever knew what the was going on. The police can't help you, they can't reach you. Oh, please. This isn't a desert island. Let us understand one another. I control things here, do not doubt it. Then tell me this. Why? Why are you doing these things to me? What have I done? I haven't touched you. But what's more, I give you my word, you will not be harmed. Really not. Then please, let me go. I'm sorry we got off to a bad start. But let's try to put that behind us, please. All right. What do you want? I want to know you completely. Totally, without inhibition. It's too late for that now. And to know you, I must hear it from you. You must tell me everything. You must tell me, you as a woman, what is it like with you and men? You must tell me every thought. Every yearning. No. It's filth, you want. Filth! What does it feel like now? No, no. Tell me. I'm watching you now. How does it feel? Is this how it felt in your bath last night? Oh, no. Tell no. me. No, no. Yes, yes, you can tell me. You will tell me everything. Sooner or later. Oh, oh please. Please. Let me get out of here. Please, please. I want to go home. I want my mother! <laughs> Mr. Vincent, if you ever want to leave here, you must come back. Do you understand that? You must come back. <laughs> the only way. The only way. It's one o'clock. Lunch is being served. Oh, please don't let me disturb you. Uh, carry on with whatever you've been doing. I'm on my way. I don't believe we've been formally introduced. I'm David. I'll be running into you again. That's one thing I'm sure of. Leaves your pain twice as fast as ordinary preparation. Just sneaky, now Remember, boy. friends, I said Creating twice a demand by personally giving us that pain that only that thing can Remember, cure. this is the quick, easy, modern way to get relief. I'll show you my way, boy. How's that for quick relief? Jean! Good morning, good morning. Do you like television? I hate it. Keep the set running so I can talk back to the commercials. Being 
that I'm a very mild woman. I need a good quarrel occasionally. It perks up my appetite. On a day like this, I love everybody. I could even find a kind word for Martin. You're a little hussy. Yes, ma'am. And you're a living doll. <laughs> Let's start our gossip. Tell me, is our boy giving you trouble? I saw that look in his eye. Well, I don't know what to make of him. Uh, that'll be all, Shoo. But I was only, uh... Get lost. They certainly jump when you say jump. I'm beginning to feel sorry for Martin. Don't let Martin fool you. He may look like an ass and sound like an ass, but he's clever. Girls, let's indulge. I have some wicked little pastries here that I smuggle in whenever I go to town. How often do you go? How, how often do you go? Whenever I'm in the mood for a change of scenery or change of diet. Well, how do you do it? Go in and out as you please, I mean. I take myself down to the garage and tell that grease monkey I'm going out. Then I point to the car I want and he hands me the keys. What's the next question? Well, could you do me a favor and... And sneak you out, Natch. If you hadn't taken so much time to come to the point, we could have had an interesting gossip about you and my little Napoleon, for instance. Oh, I haven't gotten a word in edgewise. You won't forget. You want your car? I'll do it. Really? You'll really do it, Ruth? Well, I'm not usually required to repeat myself, girl. Martin? Oh, my very dear Jane. Mm. What a delicious way to start my day. I've just talked to Ruth. Of course, I listen too. <laughs> She's invited me to lunch today, and we're going to... That's it. That's what? The quotation I was looking for. I have a bet with Vivian about his exact wording, and here it is. Words have tongues, as walls have ears. First time in the memory of man that Vivian ever lost any bet. Excuse me, my dear. Good morning, Paul. Sleep well? Are you on a fishing expedition? Snatching a moment of calm. I'm glad you found me. I see they've captured you. How terrible to be defenseless and to be peered at. Almost every time people gaze at these creatures, they begin to imagine all sorts of things about them. And about themselves. I don't know why. Perhaps that's because you haven't been netted and caged. That could be the reason. A drink? Please don't bother. Oh, no bother. All I have to do is press the buzzer and order it. I thought he was the only one who gave orders in this house. Everybody gives orders. The trick is to get them carried out. Paul. Tell me, how can I escape? Jane, first you've got to decide exactly what it is you want to escape. Him, of course. Jane, your own words make clear what it is you must do. Please don't speak in riddles. Listen to me. You said that what you want is to free yourself from him. Whether you're right or wrong, he's the enemy. Face 
face the enemy, Jane. Fight your battle. anything so horrible. Aren't any words. I've never seen. I wish you hadn't. I know, aren't you relieved? You don't have to bother any longer. Not to even pretend being civilized. At all. He was. He was watching. Gloating. Watching. That's all he ever does. Watch while other people live or die. And what about you? What sort of a monster are you? that you can live with such a beast. You do live with him, don't you? No, I'm not his mistress, no. But you do love him. We love the same things, yes. You love sadism, bestiality, perversion. Is that what you love? You don't know what you're talking about. Never mind. I mean... I made a mistake. It's nothing. I, I, I'm wrong, wrong. Yes, you are wrong. He has no hold on me of any kind. Then why would you stay here? It couldn't be for money. I'm sufficiently paid, not royal. Paid for what? Spying, sentry duty? Being a female watchdog, you know what a female watchdog is, don't you? What is the going rate for these valuable services? 
for these loyal, faithful performances of duty. Because look, I can match it. Here, one thousand dollars worth of traveler's checks. That ought to buy your loyalty, shouldn't it? My vacation money. I could just go home. Please, whoever you are, whatever you are, help me. Please, help me. I, I talk to you as a woman. You must feel it. You must hear it. You must hear me. Help me to get away from here. In the name of your womanhood, don't let him. won't help me. I can't. Oh, of course you can't. Nobody can. Ruth wanted to. It's, it's no use. Even if I was selfish enough to ask or to allow anyone to help me, I'm beyond help now. He knows that I saw it all up there. He knows I'm a witness to murder. I'm beyond help. No more and no less than before. Listen to me. He didn't see you. He doesn't know you were up there. And I'll do this much. I won't tell him. But that's all I can do. I hope this helps you. Helps you stop torturing yourself. You still have your own big problem to face. I promise you, I've been facing my problem. I'll face it again. I'll face him again. So you came back. Tell me why. Once and for all, I want to know when you will let me go. That's up to you. Stop playing games. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to lose my temper. Good. You understand how I feel about you, don't you? I told you before. Tell me again. I loathe, despise, abominate you. I'm revolted by you, sickened. You're the opposite of everything I... Brutal, sadistic, cowardly, and I mean every single word. I will say one thing more. Despite this, despite my bottomless contempt, I'll do anything, anything, if you'll let me go. Anything? Yes. Within reason. You see, I, I am cooperating. I was here in this room only two hours ago, and when I left, I said I'd never come back. You said come back. I have. You said tell you everything. I shall. Begin, tell. What do you want to know? Everything. Who you are, who do you wish you were? What have you thought? Dreamt. What do you feel? Just above all, what do you feel? Everything. But no lies. I, I, I think I understand. But it isn't hard, nor is it very interesting. I could make it lurid, of course, but you said no lies. The fact is that I honestly don't know very much about your kind of thing. Not true. Well, if you mean haven't I ever... Well, yes, there was one man, but there wasn't any real love between us. 
so it didn't really matter. Not true. I tell you, it is true. Who should know better than I? Please don't contradict me. It's you who contradict yourself. You tell me where to begin. I don't care where you begin. But begin, honestly. Well, my name is Jane. Jane Lindstrom. I'm 27 years old. I live at 243 Palmerston Boulevard. Not true! Please don't contradict me. You can't. How can I Try tell this. you? How old were you when you first let a man make love to you? Next, who was he? Next, how did you feel at the time? Next, how did you feel afterward? What did you feel? What did you think? Were you pleased, frightened, ecstatic, disgusted? What did he say? What words did you speak? That's what I want to know. Now, tell me. Now, now, all of it. Now, tell me. Yes! <laughs> no! This is something a woman is privileged to do. It solves nothing, it dissolves nothing. Please. Please. Pity. Have mercy. Those tears are just a laying of things. With nobody, no one can help you. Think. David or Chris, they cannot interfere. Or Paul, he does as I say. There's someone I haven't thought of, I rather doubt it. Yes, rather. You see, here it is. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter what name you're talking away. There's not a one of them can help you, I promise you. Not a one, not for long. And nobody. But me. There is a way out for me. You haven't, you, you couldn't anticipate. Yes? I could die. You couldn't stop that. That wouldn't do. Wouldn't it? Then let me tell you something. When I die, you'll have problems that you've never dreamt of. When I die, the police will want to know why. This is nonsense. And when I die, you'll die too. You and all of this, finished. Because my death... Your death won't be on my conscience. Then I shall have to put it to the test. I just happen to have some sleeping pills. You had that David of yours steal them? It doesn't matter. There are other ways. I'll find one. That won't be necessary. Here they are.
Who, ma'am? Mark. Well, I saw him all right. He didn't give me a second glance and didn't talk to a soul. He just walked out. I think I know. I think I know just where he is. Thank you. I knew I'd I was afraid you'd forgotten. I want to know everything that you've done today. Well, I've thought about you practically all day. I take that back, not practically, exclusively. And you? I did, too. Not quite exclusively. So many things have happened to me. But I have thought about you almost exclusively. <laughs> I'm thrilled to see you so carefree. Right now, I am. Carefree, happy. You look reborn. Oh, Mark. I've died so many times today. And just a couple of hours ago, I really, actually, physically died. And I said, I don't want to die because of you. And then a miracle happened. I didn't die. I mean, I did, and then I was born again. I know it, it all sounds confused, but that's the way it, it happened. I did. Don't look at me like that. I, I don't sound any crazier than you did to me last night. Was it only last night that I first set eyes on you? Young man, you're hurting me. It feels good, but you are hurting me. Unhand me. No, this is right. I've been told many things by many people, many of them wise men, but this is the way I feel. I can't. I won't let go of you. And I don't care how unwise, how dangerous. I'm taking you away from here. No, I won't go with you. We've only just met. We hardly know each other. Let's not risk both our necks before we sure this thing is worth it. Believe this. Please believe, as much as I believe it. Soon, I promise, we'll be happy together in our own house. Our own house? You'd have to grow up first. My problem is, you see, that sooner or later, I find boys of your age terribly vacuous. So perhaps you'd better start looking for another girl, a more dependable one. You seem so happy when you came out tonight. You seemed yourself again. I could almost... 
cry. There you go. You don't need a girl. You need a mother. dinner, and I was told to see to it, so I've uh, set a cold plate at the table. I hope it's all right, because... Because your young man is waiting for you with his car? But yes, at the back gate. Go to him. Go. You can relax now. He can't hurt you. After all, he is a watchdog. They untie him at night. He was just doing his job. You're all only doing your jobs. And you're all his watchdogs. How do I get out of this maze? Foolish thing for you to do. I can't agree. It was exactly the thing for me to do until I can think of a better one. You'd really like to get out of here, wouldn't you? That's the understatement of the week. And suppose I were to tell you there might be a way. Suppose I told you I would like to help you. I wouldn't believe you. Why? You're his man. Oh, I am, unquestionably. But not unquestioningly. I don't like what he's doing to you. I believe I can help you, if you'd let me, if you'd cooperate. What's your price? Well, really, it's not a matter of price. It's a it? matter of principle. It is, but I see it's no use. What role has been assigned to you for tonight's play? The comedy relief? Because I don't think you're a bit funny. Help me to leave, indeed. Why don't you leave? I'll tell you why. Because you can't. You can't help yourself, let alone me. 
I know about you, all about you. I saw your face this afternoon. I'll never forget it. Go on. You were more in character then. Caught red-handed, raiding a girl's room. I told you then I was sure I'd run into you again. I have. And now, good night. Right here. What's wrong? I expect my instructions to be followed exactly as given. That's what's wrong. There have been too many slip-ups this week. I want you to round up David and all the others. This includes that idiot at the gate, the one who calls himself a guard. I intend to ask several questions and I'll expect some answers. When do you want to see them? Now, in my study. Well? Easy now. I'm Chris, remember? 9.30. The time clock shuts the gate at 10. The guard is just about to be called. Jane. Oh. Good evening. Lovely night, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Couldn't be any lovelier on the other side of that gate. Could it? Oh, yes, it could. And how it could. Don't do it, Jane. It's not the answer. Who are you to decide? Nobody, really. But I think you believe I wouldn't fool you, wouldn't want to hurt you. You do understand that, don't you? Yes. I've never lied to you, although there are things that I couldn't and can't tell you. But all I've ever told you was the truth. And now I tell you this. If you go on with your dangerous plan, it could be the end of you. However dangerous, I have a plan. And it has a chance. And I have to take that chance because it's an immediate chance. No one will help me. No one. I'm about to help myself. You're wrong. Your plan doesn't have a chance. You're also wrong when you say no one can help you. I'm offering you my help. The lock. How unfair. It's 20 minutes early. It isn't only a time lock. It can also be operated by remote control. When it's necessary. I hate you. I hate you. I could cry. I don't believe you'll cry. And I don't believe you hate me. I do, I do. Oh, no, I don't, not really. Help me, Paul. Please help me. Help me now. Of course I'll help you. When? Starting now, just as you asked. Starting in 30 minutes. We have a meeting upstairs. Oh, that's right. I've heard. Are you going to your room? I'll meet you there in 30 minutes. I'll be waiting. I have nowhere else to go.
Ma? I've been looking for you. I'm sorry. I find that room oppressive. I was restless. And you weren't looking for Mark? No. I don't even know what part of the house they keep him. Let's talk. Let's be comfortable. No, thank you. Well, if you don't mind, I'll sit down. It's been a long day. A long day. Paul? I can't trust you, can't I? Seems to me you haven't much choice. It's not too late. Oh, it is late. Very late. I was so unequipped. But I've been puzzling things out. And, Paul, I do believe that I found the key. The key that will get me out of here. And you can help me. You have the floor. Well, I'll start with a question. Will you answer it? It's to do with my very first deduction. Try me. It concerns you. Almost from the start, I had a feeling. There was something about you, about your manner, that made me think of you as a medical man. Was I wrong? No, you weren't wrong. You see, at first, none of it made sense. I was Alice in Nightmare Land. Caligari, this house, things like his revolving door. An absolute despot, running his own sealed-off private world. And his friends accepting him as such, putting up with him. There was only one explanation that made sense. Caligari was a madman. With a friend who seems to share the run of the house. Who seems to wield almost as much power as he does himself. Who is a physician. Who is his keeper. An engaging theory. A good theory. And it's explained many things. It even explained you. There's a lot to be said for the logic of your deduction, but you see, it's not... I know, but I said it was my very first deduction. As a matter of fact, it's only a very small part of the whole truth. Right? Right. The question that has been gnawing at me is why. You see, Paul, incredible as it may seem now, when I first met him, I was strongly attracted to him, and he knew it. And he must have known that under the right circumstances, I might have been his. That he could have had me in the right way, the wholesome way. Instead, he chose to torture me by obscene words, to peep at me, and all the time insist that he would never touch me or lay a hand on me. I'm sure he wouldn't. Of course he wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Because he can't. Because he's impotent. That's Caligari's secret. And that's my weapon. The only one I have, but what a weapon. Paul, what would such a superman do if it became known that he wasn't even a man at all? You pose several provocative questions. I'm sorry, Paul. I, I realize that you can't discuss your patient, but as my friend, there is one question that I want you to answer. And please, Paul, answer it honestly. I will. When I use that weapon in, in desperate self-defense, when I face him with it, he'll have to get rid of me. He'll have to let me go. Or he will kill me. For the love of God, Paul, tell me you know him better than he knows himself. Which will it be? He won't kill you. He won't harm you. Let me add this. I approve of your determination to face him and challenge him. And I admire the courage it must have taken.
Yes. Please don't think badly of me, but I am drained. Shall I have to it? Not this once. You see, I'm not usually so desperate. You seem to have said these same things before. Supposing I was willing to pretend that there was no before. If this were the first time, what would you do? Give you a drink. And ask me to uh, sit down. It's a bit late in the day for a party. Late? We have all night. Won't you join me? What's the matter? Past your bedtime. You do have a bedroom, don't you? Of course. I thought perhaps you slept in that swivel chair. My room is down the hall. Are you inviting me to visit? No. Then I'll just have to drown my sorrows in drink. Let's be friendly. Must I do everything alone? Forgive me, I don't care for a drink. I wasn't only talking about drinking. You could come and sit over here, you know, just this once. You're not very talkative tonight. That's not at all like you. It's getting late. You already pointed that out. Time is fleeting and we are wasting a golden opportunity. told you I'd never touch you. But you didn't say. You didn't even hint that you couldn't touch me. I'd like to find out. I'd like to see what kind of a man you really are. What are you feeling? Tell me, now, now, look at me. 
Go ahead, look at me. What does it feel like not to have any feeling? I wish the whole house were here, all of them, not to see me, to see you, because you're the one who's been stripped. They'd see their lord and master, who likes to ogle this girl while he's hiding behind the people, who doesn't know how, who cannot reach out and take her when she's right under his nose. <laughs> I were dead. He didn't break, I did. I made a mess of it. You should have seen me. But you should have seen him, too. The look on his face. It almost worked. Sorry I couldn't come to you any sooner. I would have told you not to cry. I would have told you it did work. How in the world can you say that? I know this man. I think you've gotten through to him, to use your words, broken him. A little, anyway, and now it's up to me. What are you going to do? I'll have a talk with Caligari. I want you to see him in his study first thing tomorrow. And if my hunch is right, you may well walk out of it a free woman. I don't want to raise your hopes too high, but we have a heck of a chance. Sleep well. Tomorrow may be your day. But I can't. I'll never be able to face him again. I won't, not ever. Of course you will. You said you trusted me, trust me now. Anyway, I'll be nearby, I promise. Now. Sleep. <laughs> been sitting there for over three minutes. Cat got your tongue. Why do you find it so difficult to talk to me? <laughs> you talk to your friend, don't you? Your charming friend, so gentle, so full of promises. You tell him things, the things you won't tell me. And he tells you things. How well he knows me, how close we are. <laughs> and you trust him, don't you? That's why you're here, because he told you he'd help you. He will help me. He will. He must. <laughs> no! No! What have you done to him? He told you he'd be nearby, didn't he? You murdered him, too. If you must know, if you really want to know, he is near. Very near.
Now you know the secret. At last you're beginning to understand. You understand that nothing, nothing is quite as it seems to be. insane. Completely insane. Sanity, insanity, these are relative terms. It would be more accurate to say you'd lost touch with reality. Reality, you see, is also a relative term. David? Yes, Dr. Frank David, my associate. As you know, this is Jane Lindstrom. You were part of the nightmare. I conjured a vision. You were his henchman. I even imagined you offering to double-cross him to help me escape. You didn't imagine that. I did, I did make you such an offer. See, Dr. David and I do not always see eye to eye. That's as it should be. Still, you were my patient, and I chanced keeping you only under observation and chemotherapy. That is, drugs such as tranquilizers and narcotics. Until I could find an opportunity to precipitate a cure through some traumatic shock. Yesterday, you broke through. You went on the offensive. And that was the traumatic moment. Don't rub it in. After all, your fugue, your flight from reality, came on suddenly. And I gambled that you could be shocked out of it just as suddenly. It did take all of two and a half days. With more orthodox methods, it might have taken years. You have to rub my nose and things, don't you? <laughs> all right, I do believe in orthodox methods. But this time, you were right. And I was wrong. <laughs> and I'm glad. But I was insane. I even made up my own monster, Caligari. You didn't make him up. This is what a psychiatrist is, must be, to a patient completely at his mercy. Relentlessly, cruelly probing into the most intimate areas, deliberately causing pain, making you feel naked and defenseless. This is monstrous, but necessary too. He must try to get to the very thing that the patient is struggling to conceal. And it is a struggle. 
and he must win. Or we lose. But I also saw he was Paul, so gentle as my friend. Jane, all that your imagination created was a face. A face to fit a, a monster very real to you. There's so much I don't understand. I still don't understand those terrible, obscene cards. A man called Rorschach originated these. We used to call it the inkblot test. Abstract patterns in which the patient sees what he wants to see. Yes, Jane, everything's different. And so are you. I know. Am I free to go? Go get your things. Chris is packing them. I've made arrangements for you to be picked up. All set to go? Chris, Chris, is there anything that I can say or, or do to make up for my behavior toward you? Just tell me that you're going to be happy again. When I first came here, I knew what I was in for. I promise you, I didn't. One thing for sure, I won't be spending much time looking in mirrors. I can't tell you how much better you looked than when you first came here. It was like day and night. My flight, or whatever he calls it, is over. I'll go home now. I more than exist. I am. But I saw you in that room. You were screaming. And then I decided that I dreamt it all, including you. She gets electroshock treatments at least once a month. And she knows they relax her. Still, Madame carries on every time. Come along, my love. I can hardly believe it. On visiting hours, you were so... Don't carry on so, Mark. I'm fine. I'm taking you home. 